is the first of the series of like manually calculated statistics that I'm going to be doing. This one is focused on the chi-square test of independence or association. So let's just have an example. So let's, let's say you are interested in investigating whether there is an association between drinking alcohol and smoking cigarettes. Are alcohol drinkers more likely to smoke cigarettes or, or is there no association between drinking alcohol and smoking cigarettes? So let's say you've asked 30 students to complete a brief survey whether, asking whether they either drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes. So it's just a binary yes or no answer for both of those questions. And let's say that we have the results and we want to put it into a contingency table. So whenever they are data in the contingency table, you know that it the chi-square test that's going to be used. So let's say that we have the smokers on the columns. So let's say yes, yes and no for smoking. So no and yes. Handwriting is pretty bad on paper, and it's even worse when I'm trying to use a mouse to write. But I'll try to make it as legible as possible. So this is smoke. And let's have the rows for alcohol. So no and yes. Or alcohol. Okay, so let's say we have nine individuals who both do not drink alcohol and do not smoke cigarettes, while we have six participants who answered that they do smoke but don't drink alcohol. And let's say we have seven participants who do drink but don't smoke. And we have eight participants who both drink and smoke. Okay, so now we've got the basic contingency table set up. We just need to do a double check on two assumptions. Basically that the data is both mutually exclusive and exhaustive. So what mutually exclusive means is that each member of the population can be assigned to one and only one category. And exhaustive means that there's no member of the sample or the population that's left unclassified. So we can say we can see by adding up the, the total of the columns that we have 15 people who don't drink alcohol. And we have fifteen, and we have fifteen people that do drink alcohol, which gives us a total of thirty individuals. And we can double check the columns that we have sixteen people who don't smoke, and fourteen people who do smoke. Both of those totals, fifteen plus fifteen and sixteen plus fourteen, equal thirty. So we can say that this data set is exhaustive because no member of the sample size was left out and we can say it's mutually exclusive because each member of the sample can be assigned to only one category so they can either don't smoke and don't drink they can smoke but don't drink they drink but don't smoke and they smoke and they drink so we can say that those assumptions have been met. Okay, so now that we have that sorted out, we can move on to the actual calculations. And let's make that smaller. Uh, disappear completely. Make it smaller. And stick it in the corner there. Okay, so as the the formula for chi square is 
pi square equals its sum, that is the sum it's meant to be, of the observed frequencies minus the expected frequencies squared divided by the expected frequency. So basically that means that we first have to calculate the expected frequencies for all of the different cells. So the cell for no smoke and no alcohol, the cell for yes smoke and no alcohol and so on. We already have the observed frequencies. These are the scores that we actually have and that's why they're called the observed scores. So we can move on then to calculating the we can move on then to calculating the expected frequencies, which is the first part, a manually calculated chi-square calculation. So in order to get the expected frequencies, so the formula for the expected frequency, so let's say E for expected equals the total number of cell rows. So total cell row. It's uh, terrible. It's a row times the total of the cell column. Total cell column. So, so lastly we would divide the product of the total cell row and the total cell column by the total number of subjects or n which in this case would be 30. Okay, so we can move on from that. And I think the best way to proceed with the calculations from here on out is to create another table. For instance, we have one column with the observed frequencies and the next column with our calculated or to be calculated expected frequencies. Okay, so let's just enter the observed frequencies. So we would have no alcohol and no smoke with 9, yes alcohol and no smoke with 7, no alcohol but they do smoke with 6 and they smoke and they drink with 8. Okay, so to calculate our expected frequencies we'll have to take the total cell row which is 15 for the observed frequency of no alcohol and no smoke. 15 here times the total cell column which is 16 divided by our total number of subjects which is 30 and that gives us an expected frequency of 8. So here we would enter 8. So we would do that for all the other the observed frequencies and we would end up getting 8 for the yes to alcohol and no to smoke, 7 for the no alcohol but they do smoke and 7 again for the expected frequency of yes to alcohol and yes to smoke. Okay. So the next part, as you can see in our, for, our formula here, is to subtract the expected frequency from the observed frequency. So we would add another column to our table, O minus E, and then we can simply subtract the expected frequency from the observed frequency giving us one here, negative one there, negative one there, and one here. So next part would be to square this observed minus expected frequency. 
So O minus E squared <clears throat> and 1 squared is 1, negative 1 squared is 1, negative 1 squared is 1, and 1 squared is 1. So lastly, we would need to divide our calculated O minus E squared by the initial expected frequency. So let's just add that in here. O minus E squared over E. So then 1 divided by 8 is 0 0.15 I mean, sorry, 0 0.125. And again, it will be the same here, as it is the same expected frequency and the same product. So 0 0.125. And then 1 divided by 7 equals 0 0.14. And again, it will be the same here. 1 divided by 7 equals 0 0.14. Now, to get our chi-square value, we would have to sum up all of these values. So after we sum up all these values, you would get a, a chi-square score of 0 0.54, summed up. Okay. So now that we actually have our chi-square value, we're not quite finished with the interpretation side of this calculation. We have to calculate our critical value. So in order to do that, so in order to calculate the critical value by which we interpret our chi-square score, we need to calculate the degrees of freedom in our data set. So the calculation for degrees of freedom for a contingency table is df degrees of freedom equals rows, number of rows, minus 1, times columns, minus 1. So as we only have two rows and two columns, it would be 2 minus 1 times 2 minus 1, which basically means 1 times 1, which equals 1. So our degree of freedom for this particular data set is 1. We have 1 degree of freedom. So now that we have calculated our chi-square value of 0 0.54 and we know that we have a degree of freedom of 1 or 1 degrees of freedom, we can then look at uh, a list of critical values generally at the back of textbooks of the chi-square distribution and at an alpha level of 0 0.05 which is pretty default, the critical value of 1 degree of freedom would be 3.8415 um, I'll put a link in the description where you can have well, where I'll list a, a chi-square distribution of interpretation but generally if you have a stats textbook they will they will have them at the back of it just have a look okay so basically now we need to compare our calculated chi-square value of 0 0.54 to that of the critical value of 3.8415 and we can see that our calculated value is quite a lot smaller than the critical value. So basically what that means is that our finding does not exceed the critical value or the threshold value for significance which makes our data set not statistically significant. So we can conclude that there is no statistically significant association between drinking alcohol and smoking cigarettes. And that's pretty much it for manually calculating a chi-square test. If you have any comments, just 
leave them in the comments section and if you found this video useful please give it a like and subscribe to the channel.